Good afternoon. I hope everyone enjoyed their meals. Now I'd like to discuss usage of modern peripherals and uh, Python web development. Um, the agenda will be, I will start describing myself, then I will talk a little about which will be used to, in this project, and after the, that I will go straight forward to a few modern peripherals that emerged in the last few years. Uh, summary with links to where you can get the source code used in this presentation and also how to reach me. I came from Poznan in Poland, which is only a two hour drive from Berlin, so it's close to civilization too. Uh, I'm learning Python only from uh, the end of the uh, September last year, so there are a newbie. Uh, but it was enough to get hired by the awesome company which is STX Next uh, as a junior Python developer I'm creating apps using Flask, Django and Pyramid I'm also a junior mentor at PyLadies in Poznan where I have, when I, where I have opportunity to teach Python and Flask uh, for younger generations and uh, before that, I was a photojournalist, war photojournalist, and uh, head of local photography for one of the major um, publishing houses in Europe. Uh, you can see a few photos from uh, my last years when I was working still. And I still do some photography, but mostly for pleasure. And this is my first long time and first in programming. Uh, WebSockets. WebSocket is a protocol providing a full duplex communication channel over a single TCP connection. Sorry, I'm using one of the devices I will be talking about to present, so it has not working as good as it should. And uh, I will not go to the details about the WebSocket protocol, you can read it on your own, I will just briefly explain how it works. And uh, it works uh, with a start uh, with a shine handshake, which upgrades connection of HTTP to WebSocket protocol. And after that, there is message exchange from server to client, uh, triggered by the server, depending on how the developer programmed the application. And that's the part which interests us when communicating to with the um, perpetual devices. And after that, there is a kill message that uh, ends the communication from one side to another. Uh, there is a few ways to implement sockets uh, in Python. The first is the built-in Python socket library, which is very nice, uh, fast, but has one disadvantage. You have to create the JavaScript, the front-end part, yourself. So I, wouldn't, I, won't, I didn't use that. Uh, instead, I was thinking about using the socket IO library, uh, which has both uh, Python and Part, uh, but it would require me to run a second server just for WebSockets. So my solution uh, was use uh, Flask extension, Flask socket uh, IO library, uh, which is all in one solution and. Um, allow me to use just one server for all communication. Uh, there is a picture version of what we will be doing. We have a Flask, which has a major stream of communication using HTTP port, and also a second to sockets, web sockets. And uh, uh, here is a receiving part on the front end uh, for uh, web sockets. Uh, it's very simple. It just connects uh, to the um, uh, to the application part on the backend and uh, emits or receives uh, signals from the backend. Um, if you know Flask, um, oh, sorry, I need one thing more. Um, if you, it's important that we will be using a 0 0.9 version of the socket IO application because uh, the current one is not supported. A Flask extension. So it may differ from what you will see on the internet right now. And this is the um, backend uh, code uh, which is responsible for Python part. And if you know Flask, uh, it will be easily using the Flask uh, IO extension because as you can see, there's uproad for Flask and there's socket on 
and uh, connection. Uh, that's all you have to uh, really worry about. And the second, uh, that's on receiving and to emit, you just use part uh, of the scripts. Uh, uh, of the scripts. Uh, the first device about is uh, a tribe. It's a uh, a tracking hardware. Um, uh, a tracking hardware, uh, which is nowadays advertised as the cheapest solution on the market. Uh, but despite the self-explaining name, what is an a tracking? Uh, a tracking is a process of using sensors to estimate where a person is looking, the kind of gaze, and uh, a tribe uses infrared sensor for it. The Hardware part is simple. There more, there's more complicated um, part on the uh, on the algorithm side of the project. And uh, eye tracking can be used in a variety of applications, uh, passive and active. Um, I will call, there. I will talk more about passive during the rest of the presentation. I'll only mention the, some of the actives. Uh, for example, it's a device control. You can, uh, I mean, games control your mouse point or even use it to log in to the computer. Um, a tracking isn't anything uh, new because you can get a photographic camera from the 80s and 90s, which will also be following focusing system like Canon 1V. Um, and uh, here is a a short advertisement from the producer of the application. Uh, it's how they would like to see their uh, their device used. They concentrate more on uh, daily usage, and uh, as uh, you probably think, uh, this is only advertising works so well, and it's true. And um, to prove that, there is um, on the second slide you will see um, my, uh, what I think may happen in the future: the a following app written in this code, and it was working as you see, uh, not so bad. It has some glitches, but it was still acceptable usage. And uh, okay, there are a few uh, possible web application 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 usages. The first one is analysis uh, to analyze what uh, can be what the user see, what uh, what he focus uh, what he focus on, to improve the layout of the page, of the des design of the page, and of course the ad location on the page. And it's already common use uh, nowadays. Uh, the second application is to control uh, whole sites using eye tracking. Uh, it will allow uh, even severely disabled people with mental or uh, to use it. Uh, everybody knows Stephen Hawking. Uh, he managed to use uh, it daily. And uh, probably more people will be able to use it if the devices will be cheaper. And uh, the third um, the third possible usage is uh, ad uh, control. That uh, will happen after the um, using a tracking will be more uh, daily on, used on daily basis, and then you will be attacked from everywhere by the uh, by the ads that will just follow your eyes on the side uh, other places, even uh, even when you are driving a car. And uh, when we will be stop using keyboards and uh, mouse, uh, imagine that you will have to roll an eyes at or blink twice. Uh, okay, uh, you can download the simple Python wrapper uh, for the trap device, um, which is only one file that connects to a trap daemon, which has to be run around uh, during the usage of the a trap device, and uh, it's a very straightforward written and uh, provides uh, all necessary data. Here is the Python code that uh, connects to the a tribe, the A tribe um, demon, when the user connects to the um, web socket, and after starting an event, uh, it sends uh, data periodically. Uh, the Python solution wasn't too good to present uh, live uh, live stream of data, 
um, but it was much better as well uh, for analyzing data. And this is the part for uh, moving the uh, on the Python side. And I didn't make a movie because it was too glitchy to, to even show. Uh, so, uh, and the GS uh, library, the pure GS on, without Python, was uh, even simpler to use. Uh, it was not lagging too much, but it also required another demon to run. So, to fully run the site, you would have to have at least three, uh, three courses, one for each uh, demon, uh, which is quite demanding on the resources. So. And uh, I was, uh, at, as I was comparing, uh, J uh, JavaScript solution and the solution, uh, both uh, are usable, but uh, you have to choose uh, what do you want to do. If you want to acquire data and uh, analyze data f to improve the website look, you should use Python because uh, the mm, rate of receiving data is much higher. If you want to create an A follow or a tit, uh, you use JavaScript. It may improve when the socket IO library with streaming capabilities will be uh, also ready for Python, but nowadays it's not, and I hope it will change. And um, when I was thinking about this project, I came up with an uh, application, with an idea for application that will be analyzing the how the user is looking at a picture or and uh, write his knowledge about the art uh, by the uh, by the long class he looking where he focused or how he moved his eye on the picture or even how long was he looking at the picture because we can measure that now easily okay and this is how the eye looks like it's really simple uh, sim uh, small and uh, portable uh, but it's hard to use with a notebook. You can only use it with a desktop PC, uh, to be honest. Uh, the second device is Mio, Mio R Band, which I'm using to the presentation, which is glitchy as you see. It should excel, uh, uh, which should, should excel because it's uh, still advertised as an ultimate presentation tool nowadays. Uh, I would but maybe with some practice and uh, without moving your hands, you could use it more, uh, use, use it better. Uh, firstly, it as a new way to interact with uh, computer, computers. It's more focused on the presentation because, as, as I mentioned, it tried to excel. And it, uh, the armband reads your muscle activity using electromyography sensor, which electric uh, impulses going through your muscles. It also have accelerometer uh, to allow you control the software or the to allow you to, to control the software with gestures or uh, motion uh, you are using. Uh, and here is also an ad for uh, my band. And some of them good, uh, works even good. I didn't try the game part. That doesn't work good. <laughs> Sorry, I crashed it uh, two times. And, uh, but controlling movie or um, iTunes works uh, good enough, but it's not a web application. I also didn't try to be a soldier. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, the reality, as you can see during this presentation, isn't as colorful and cheerful as it is in, in the ad. And here you can see uh, the scrolling with gestures, a wave in and a wave out of the side. The first part was uh, one time, it works fine, but the second sent a uh, few times the same event, so the whole page down. So there's still glitches uh, on the Mayo um, SDK part. And uh, there are many possible web messages, uh, as I said, page control. For example, you have a metal band uh, site, and imagine that to show to see the login screen, you have to make the famous rabbit sign. Uh, and after you make it, uh, you will only see the login screen. Uh, it can be very useful.
useful in uh, unfriend environment or when you have to work uh, on something remotely. For example, imagine a um, scientist working at Vulcano Place where uh, using cable probably won't be possible because of the heat. And you can still make uh, any motions on your, by your hands and it uh, doesn't have to be precise. And the uh, usage I found uh, could be useful that it will be a fit add-on to your application when your client is working too hard and type too many words, he will have to make a pause, make a few gestures, and then he can he, he then continue the work he was doing. It could be also useful for programmers to stop working and uh, relax them or hand muscles uh, for a bit. And uh, the Python wrapper is uh, still an active project. Uh, with a very nice and helpful initiator. Uh, you can uh, ask him anything and he will be still helpful. It's much bigger uh, than the A-Tribe uh, wrapper, wrapper uh, because it sends uh, and receives much more data from the muscles and from the gestures than just the location of your gaze and uh, location of your eyes, which does the uh, A-Tribe wrapper. Uh, here is the Python code, which is uh, fairly similar uh, similar to the uh, A-Tribe uh, A uh, code uh, on Python side. And uh, as you can see, I also on the connection, I start um, daemon and I sent the um, current gesture. If it was wave in, it should uh, send a um, meow down uh, event and when I make a wave out uh, sign it should send me a way uh, meow up event which should uh, scroll my page uh, top or bottom and uh, the socket and the socket uh, part, the front end part uh, is uh, also similar to the part of the Java uh, of the i tribe and then Next example, it will be similar situation because it's just from receiving data, not uh, not uh, and starting the connection. And I'd like to uh, think about the Tinder application where you can dislike or like uh, people and imagine using it by your well, I dislike her and slap <laughs> uh, or uh, her. You can make a heart sign or come to me. And it's interesting because you can use even two uh, arm bands, each for one hand, and I think it will be rather more useful in um, games where uh, you could control your uh, avatar uh, by your hand. Uh, there's also many movies on YouTube, and uh, it works quite nice. Okay, the third of... Uh, as a mio arm band and it's quite simple everything and the third device is uh, lip motion which is really small I think it's the it's the oldest one of the three uh, many people could uh, already see something about it um, it's the most mature one also uh, the lip motion brings uh, gestures from uh, from phones smartphones and tablets to your notebook or desktop by reading what you are doing in front of the screen. It uses two infrared cameras with infrared lighting uh, to, sorry, it, uh, to convert, uh, to get an image of your hands and uh, the algorithm part which converts this image to a uh, precise 3D uh, image of your hands uh, its quality is enough to that you can uh, get the data from each bone bones joint up to the gestures. Everything uh, is there, um, and how it's presented by the producer. And this time, uh, the advertisement is quite uh, real, and most of these things are possible and works, and not laggy and the most precise one of this three. Um, okay. uh, 
and this is how it was done using a, I was grabbing a and moving it this uh, this manner four times it works perfectly but it was a gesture when I was uh, trying to make uh, a similar thing like I pointing to a point and it should uh, give me a um, advertisement on this or a ping on this location so uh, the problem uh, on uh, the WebSocket implementation, uh, which wasn't, uh, which was getting lags because of the um, request and responses all the time, and it wasn't working that great. Um, the web app usage is mostly to control the site itself. Uh, you can imagine that pointing a finger in the exact place could uh, uh, replace the mouse. It would be difficult to input any text or extending the current usage of the website uh, uh, more further in uh, the my imagine app uh, part. Uh, the Python wrapper was created by the lib manufacturer, so it's very precise. Uh, it's the biggest one uh, of the all and gives you the most data from all of the three wrappers. And it only needs uh, two libraries to work with the device. It, they don't have to even be installed uh, uh, globally on your machine. Um, this is the um, Python code uh, just to receive, uh, uh, just to get the index finger. And uh, when you will be pointing it, it will send the data where the finger is uh, on the. Um, this is the also receiving part. It's very similar to the A tribe because I only, because the usage was similar in this example. And uh, now I would like you to imagine a Tajor Pizza application uh, where you see all the ingredients on uh, on your screen and you can just move them on your pizza and. Uh, uh, wait for uh, receiving uh, the pizza uh, as similar as you created it using your own hands. Uh, there are already something like that in few restaurants that you have tablet, but it's uh, locally and not made remotely yet. Okay. So many targets all the time. There are, I only mentioned three devices, and uh, very briefly, that emerged in last years. There's even a ring you can put on your finger and make gestures. Um, but to sum up, the Flask is very simple and very useful and, uh, and easy to use uh, uh, with this um, kind of technology. Uh, the, uh, there was similar implementation of the device for of the old devices could be made, but uh, not every implementation was working that good as we would like to expect. Uh, some worked only good in, uh, when it was all done on the client side, uh, especially the iTribe. Um, uh, the Python socket uh, plus JavaScript plus continuous data stream was a little bit laggy uh, all the time. And uh, I also had a lot of fun playing with all the devices. And I would recommend it to anyone who is into such a queries uh, to play with some of them. And I think they give unlimited possible usages. And uh, I will get back to the code part and try to use, uh, because the presentation thing on the Mio band, which I didn't want to try during the presentation, hard to uh, navigate to show something. And the second one is to zoom. It can be useful, maybe not, but uh, as you can see, I tried to exit it and <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah. No, I have to use it. <laughs> the gesture to exit it and it's stuck. 
Okay. And the second one was. At all, sorry. Okay, uh, the whole uh, code that was used here uh, will be available at my GitHub account with the slides from the presentation. I just need to clean some of it uh, from uh, comments uh, that are not necessary. Uh, you can contact me on anything you want. Uh, of course, even if you forget. Uh, my email, you can Google it, it should uh, find, uh, get you right straight there. And uh, as I was told on uh, one of the presentations, it's always a good thing to add a kitty, a cute kitty at the presentation because it gives you 15% better feedback, which I'm counting from you for any feedback, how to improve myself. And uh, yeah, sh you can ask me now any questions you want. Yes. It's so I have a question. You just said that this armband can be used to read your electrical impulses. Sure. Can this be done in the opposite way so that it emits some electrical impulses and move your hand? No, because it's <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's only a sensor, so it doesn't send. It's great to have a red button that can control your hand. <laughs> Maybe you can engineer it. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, just my question is, how do you communicate between the this wireless thing and the Flask? Because Flask is just a web framework. And uh, what we, like, do you keep the tab active on your website and then you communicate? Or does it pass? operating system to the flask if you get out of the um, tab which you are using yeah. it will connect it will disconnect the web socket so you will have lost your uh, communication uh, but uh, when you are in active tab it's communicating with using web sockets so as I explained it on the beginning of the presentation uh -huh. okay. oh, I think that was armband uh, it looked uh, in the code as y you do have some feedback you guess it's in the armband it worked before here during the presentation okay any more uh, yes I was wondering if there a way uh, of using maybe flash uh, to communicate with these devices so that uh, I mean something that already is in browser that uh, we don't have to deliver the backhand to the user? Yes, uh, it's possible to use Flash. Uh, you mean to communicate with the backend or to communicate with the device itself? Uh, with the device, so that uh, we the device to the user, he installs it or she, and uh, works with our application which is on the server somewhere. Uh, yes, it's possible. You can use only JavaScript, for example. There's a library for each device. And um, the leap motion device and the armband device, uh, uh, you don't. You only just attach a JavaScript library. The um, iTribe is more. Um, uh, it's harder to implement because you have to connect from the server to the client's daemon to implement it. And this is the hardest one to implement. Uh, Oh, yeah. So they uh, do have uh, some connection. I mean, browser can access it, or uh, in in which way they work? They send just keyboard signals, so that I uh, because I mean, browser obviously don't understand the fancy USB devices. Mm -hmm. you can read keystrokes, maybe mouse clicks. So they uh, do send something like keystrokes or mouse clicks back to the browser. 
Um, at, if you are using JavaScript library, yes, you have to, you already have, to use this device. You have to install it. Okay. And yeah. um, if you have the drivers installed, it's yeah. enough for a JavaScript to receive the signal. You only have to allow to communicate uh, in the browser. You have a pop-up that will show that uh, this, dev this, this, uh, this application, this site, want to use your new armband or uh, leap motion, and uh -huh. it will connect to the so, uh, to the um, uh, JavaScript part, and it will be able you will be allowed to send signals. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's not a problem. There's, uh, but I was thinking that because you can also communicate with Bash, it's also possible. I didn't yeah. try that, but I know way also. And uh, one funny thing is that uh, all of the dev the new armband and libmotion also have uh, Chrome extensions, and there it works perfect. It's I mean, designed by. I, uh, any any other question? Well, if not, uh, thank you very much, and thank you, I hope you... <laughs>